Whether you're a hobbyist, amateur, or professional, you can master photography. It takes time, it takes patience, but here are at least eight topics, eight subjects that you can photograph and perfect right now. So yeah, you're not gonna learn, obviously, everything right away. Even professionals don't know everything. There's always a drawback to something. There's always a new technique to learn. So basically, just take your time and I will develop and you will be able to get great shots. Perfect example of a subject that you could start off with is you know, babies and children photography. You have the opportunity to create memories that will literally last a lifetime and only happen once. You're only six months old once. You're only one year old once, etc. You have the opportunity to make it not a snapshot. You have the opportunity to create something great. And a couple quick tips is basically the hardest part is getting their attention if they're a little older, you know, as more or less children. So what you should do, and I don't have my keys on me, but you could jingle them in front of, the, you know, in front of the camera to get their attention so they at least look. Bam, take a quick shot. And especially with kids and babies and everything, using flash is okay. Sometimes the parents don't like it, sometimes the parents do. So do your best to make sure you know that. And as well as using fast shutter speeds because children and babies, they flail and move. So if you're trying to use a slower shutter for some reason, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but it can be done. But yet again, faster shutter speeds are best. Also, if you're feeling intimidated by doing these, you can at least uh, try to assist a professional, second shoot, help out. Even if you are donating your time, you're actually getting practical experience that you could use and that you can understand maybe how to pose a child, etc., a baby, and how to feel more comfortable. So I recommend that for this, especially with babies and children and everything I'm about to mention. A second quick and easy subject is pet photography. You know, it's actually kind of lucrative. A lot of people love their pets. You know, you have people uh, with four to five pets. So you can actually make some money off of taking pet portraits. You just go over to their house or go to the park and get them to sit. Once again, the hard part is getting their attention and getting them in one place. So faster shutter speeds again, and uh, definitely try to make sure you get their attention, keys, bone, whatever you want. And this is one of my personal favorites and what I feel I'm best at is people photography. And it's anything, weddings, events, anything that involves a person, portraits. You know, this is where you have to understand more or less composition, you know, when to, when to fire the shutter to create, you know, that moment, not just taking a snapshot. And over time, you'll come to learn how to work with people's facial features, you know, their size, how texture works, how, as I said, composition. You'll be able to learn how to capture the basically identity within the photo. So it's something great you can have later on. This one is the most challenging, but I'm going to come in with street photography. It's one of the greatest things. You get people in, the, in an environment, you capture the candid. Basically, candid is capturing people when they're not expecting it, keeping, capturing people in their uh, natural movement so they're not expecting what you're doing. Street photography is a great thing. As I said, you see things normally other people don't. You have that one chance in, in time, in history, to capture that one moment. It's that maybe that homeless guy sitting by the fire plug or something like that. I didn't mean you. But yeah, it's something great that you can do. You really have to work up the confidence for it. You can master it in probably a couple of months once you start to build confidence to be able to talk to people. Yes, it's tough. Uh, I'm still a little weary with it, but yet again, I've you go out of your comfort zone and do something with that. It's great to see how many people actually say yes to you, or as a lot of people do, you just go up and take their picture and you know run if they try to come after you with a knife or something. As I mentioned in a lot of my videos, it's all about patience as well. Uh, street photography is definitely all about patience because you have to wait, you know, wait till a shot comes by and all of a sudden you see it, bam, you got it, you captured it, then you can move on to the next subject. And this one is a huge one because everybody travels, hopefully. So if you're traveling, you can take great shots. And it's more or less a lot of just, you gotta watch a snapshot type uh, photo. You have to make sure you try to capture something well. Use what you know. Use your basic composition tips. Use, use anything. It's great to have the, the typical, oh, you know, here's Mount Rushmore, click, and it's just the same Mount Rushmore shot. But get down low, you know, as your portrait, as in front of the monument, you know, get down low, set the camera low, you two stand there, do something cool. Bam, so it's something more dynamic. It looks really cool. And that's just in general, or the bean in Chicago or something like that, anything like that. Try to create more interest with it, but you can have a great shot with any, any kind of camera, doesn't matter. This one more or less comes into macro flower photography. And I think we're coming to number six here, but hey, who's counting, right? Basically not the most difficult. I can go right there and find a flower right now and take a photo of it. Uh, it's easier if you have a macro lens, for example, 
but the way to keep it interesting is the hard part, not just finding the subject, and that can go with anything. You have to understand how the light will hit it. Right now, it's a little, it's a little dull outside, so I'd have to maybe come up with like a maybe cool little flash thing to make some light pop or something, because it's it's going to give even light, but it's not going to look the greatest. Yeah, you can pump up the contrast, pump, 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 pump the contrast, but you have to figure out a way to make it interesting. Try a different angle, try different different lens choice maybe. Do something, make it different. Once again, a lot of people know this, landscape photography. Landscape photography. You have to learn how to maybe move the horizon line so it's not dead center, so you can create a different perspective. Use a wide lens. It's, it's very, very simple in regards to that, but creating the emotion, creating the image is the hardest part, and you know, that's a lot of people, what a lot of people struggle with. Rounding off the list at number eight, is wildlife and nature photography. Now you're more or less in their environment, so you can create a great shot of maybe, you know, if you're at the zoo or the national park where there's animals going around, or in general, anything, bird, bird shooting, anything like that. It's all about just getting them in their natural environment to set a scene. It's cool to go close up, maybe to capture some emotion, but showing a little bit of the environment and where these animals are at is a better thing so you can fully get the story. In regards to lenses, it's usually better to have longer focal lengths so you can actually stand further back so you're not distracting the birds or so they don't know you're there as much. Once again, faster shutter speeds because you know they can move. But if it's a bigger animal like a bear or polar bear or something, um, if you see a polar bear, that's probably an issue. But if you see something like that, you could probably use a slower shutter speed because they're not going to be moving as quick because they're pretty big. Those are eight photography subjects that you can go out and perfect right now. And they're as simple as going out and shoot, you know, taking some of the tips, reading up on some of the tips. As long as you go out and shoot with the tips, you're going to be fine. If you just sit there at home and just be like, oh, you know, use a longer focal length, that's good. But until you go out there and do it, you're not going to actually learn how to do it. So go out and shoot, go out and practice. It's always a fun thing. As I said, there's probably a flower right over there. So that's all I got. Eric Rossi, the guy with the eye. Uh, let me know down below anything else you want to add to subjects that you can you know basically easily master because there's you know there's there's a ton more out there but i just covered some of the basic ones eric rossi the guy with the eye master those subjects